In the presentation so far, we've looked at choosing a research topic and formulating a research question. We've looked at compiling a literature review and we've looked at selecting a research methodology. This is the fourth section where we're going to be looking fairly briefly at presenting and analysing our findings. The key issue here is always to keep findings and your analysis and discussion separate. The findings that are the result of your research methodology, your data collection, should be presented exactly as you find them, without any comment. Keep your comment in a separate section, call it analysis, call it discussion, whatever you like, but, but don't mix up the two. What you need to think of, first of all, is the clearest way of presenting your findings. You could use graphs, you could use tables, you could use charts, you could use some form of matrix diagram. Even interview data can be made more accessible by putting it in chart form, where you look at questions and then look at different or a sample of different responses to those particular questions and present it as a table or a chart. Once you've presented your findings and you've carried out your analysis of those findings and made comments upon them, you need to move towards some kind of conclusion. Now the conclusion I would always advise students isn't something that you should leave right until the end. Clearly you cannot write your conclusion until you've done your research, until you've done your literature survey, until you've analysed your findings. But many students leave it right at the last minute when they're pushed for time and the conclusion comes out as fairly rushed. I would advise you to make notes as you're going along. As you're looking at those findings, making your analysis, thinking of links to the literature, jot down a set of notes that you then use as a basis of your conclusion. So what should your conclusion be, be saying? Firstly, what sense have you made of your research findings? Have they answered your research question? Have they answered your research question in full or in part? If there are parts of your research question that your data collection, your findings do not answer, that's okay. Just state it. But we want to know the extent to which your research question has been answered. The next thing we need to know is the extent to which your findings are similar or are different to those that you've found in the literature search. This should be part of your conclusions. Many students include recommendations at the end of their conclusions. And this always puzzles me. The question I always ask my students is, recommendations to whom and for what purpose have you been asked to make recommendations? My advice to you is leave recommendations out unless this is a requirement of your university or you are expected to do a particular project for the, 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 that is solving a particular problem or it's a kind of management report based on an internship or some organisation. Apart from those, recommendations really have no place in your research report uh, 
even at the end. End. I was getting a bit, I felt. Camera rolling and sound. Take two, section four. So far in the presentation, we've looked at choosing a research topic, formulating a research question. We've looked at compiling a literature review and we've looked at selecting a research methodology. In section four, what I want to look at is presenting and analysing your findings. The clearest piece of advice I can give to anyone here is to keep their findings and their analysis and discussion as separate entities within their report. Your findings should simply tell what your data collection comes up with, what your research has actually found. Your own interpretation of this comes through in your analysis and discussion. In presenting these findings, consider the clearest way that the findings can be presented in your final report. Think of using graphs, charts, tables, even qualitative information such as that derived from interviews can be presented in table form where you look at question by question and select key responses which illustrate the points that you wish to illustrate. Once you've carried out your analysis you need to consider moving towards some kind of conclusion. The conclusion really is telling the reader what sense have we made of our findings? What precisely have we concluded from these findings? And an important element of this is to state within the conclusion what the limitations of our research have been and where perhaps this research may lead to in the future. Obviously, in the conclusion, you need to focus specifically on the research question. Have we answered the research question wholly or maybe just in part? And if we have only answered it in part, why have we only answered it in part? What is missing? Is this a limitation of our research? Is this something that should be left for another researcher or another day in our own research? There's nothing wrong in only partially answering research questions provided you're up front about this. A key thing in your conclusion is really to pull together your own research your own findings with those of other people. So you look at what you have found, what your analyses have been, and compare that to what has been found in the literature. Many students include in their report a section which they call recommendations. I often find this a little strange, particularly with an academic-based report, simply because it poses the question recommendations to who and for what purpose. I would avoid recommendations unless this is a specific requirement of your college in writing your dissertation, or in fact what you have compiled is a, a management report based on some kind of internship, or a company research report where some kind of recommendation has been required by the company. Apart from those specific cases, then really recommendations don't add much to a report because, as I've said before, they simply raise the question, who are you recommending this to and for what reason? 